as you reflect overnight on what you saw, mm. uh, how do you feel about the success of that and will it continue? It, it, it's, it's very tender, isn't it? Hostages yeah. inside hostages as well, paying mm. off criminal families, we hear. Yeah, it's... Uh, you do have to just take it sort of one step at a time and we have to sort of bear in mind here that there is a finite number of hostages and these are worth an awful lot to Hamas because actually a lot of you know, why this was uh, facilitated lots of members of the international community are taking credit for it are sort of applauding it saying it's fantastic it's not really got anything to do with the international community it's because of domestic pressure inside Israel to get these hostages home otherwise you know, if there was no pressure at all Gaza could have been turned into a car park by now the, yeah. the IDF has that capacity it, it is not a genocidal regime um, despite what lots of people like to say uh, that is why they have behaved with relatively restraint that is why they are not committing you know mass atrocities uh, because they want to get as many of these people out as possible that ultimately is one of the core goals now you've actually seen within the Israeli government there have been certain elements further to the right who have actually said this shouldn't be a priority we should be pushing to just destroy Hamas and these people are already dead and I think that it shows you uh, just how much internal strife there is within uh, the coalition the governing coalition uh, that the side that wanted to get the hostages out and is prepared to exchange Palestinian prisoners in return for that has won and I think again that shows you uh, quite uh, the, the level of strength of feeling within Israel itself it is as you say it is the first step it is the first step and it has gone very smoothly partly I think it's gone smoothly because of the efforts made to get the Thai hostages out because mm. yeah this was an important thing for the rest of the world which is a separate deal it is a separate it does beg the question what did Thailand pay Iran Thail yeah Thailand went straight to or Iran Qatar. yeah well no it was they went to Iran who then went to the Qataris because of course the Iranians have uh, slightly a Qatar on 20 percent I mean serious <laughs> question I mean you know <laughs> no I mean, no one's doing this for free are Qatar they? is a curious one it, you know it houses the Hamas's uh, leadership it houses the Taliban leadership it houses all kinds of people as long as you've got the money as long as you've got some of its interest and our World Cup presenters including Gary Lineker for a month yeah and lots of uh, it also has lots of migrant labor and this I suspect is part of the reason why uh, countries like Thailand are able to sort of uh, negotiate with uh, countries like Qatar, countries like Iran, because they provide a great deal of the labor force actually across the Middle East, not just in Israel. And yeah, again, be outside of the West, the Palestinians tend to actually have a lot more sympathy than the Israelis do. It's not actually in Hamas's interests, therefore, to take lots of foreign hostages from non-Western countries and be seen to be murdering and killing them, because other countries might then think, well, hang on a second, where's the solidarity now? We, what, what happened to that? So I think it was an important part of that to be seen to be dealing with the rest of the world, saying, no, we're not barbaric, we can release these people, we can do business. Um, and therefore, there was no chance, I think, of Israelis suffering as part of the exchange, because you couldn't have them on the same day, you know, the ties going free and then them going, ah, but we're going to, you know, sort of brutalise the Israelis as they're going out. Now, as you said, you did see some very ugly scenes as people were being released. That's not because, you know, there's goodwill towards these Israelis. It's all part of the optics uh, of the exchange. But we have to be clear here. It's been, for me, it's been pushed by two things. One, Israeli public opinion saying, no, you have to get these people back. And two, countries like Iran, which is still a very, you know, muscular presence in all of this, leaning on the Qataris, leaning on Hamas, saying, no, no, you've got to get these people out as well. They've got nothing to do with it. Uh, you know, and, and this is broadly very important for our wider interests. Because, of course, Iran has proxy groups uh, out in the Far East as well, not in Thailand, but in uh, neighbouring countries. So for its geopolitical strategy outside of the Middle East, Having good relations with countries like uh, Thailand is also very important. Benedict, you said right at the beginning of this conversation about Israeli public opinion mm. being on the side of get the hostages out, mm. and then some uh, within the governing coalition saying, no, 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 we have to remember why this war was declared. Yeah. And the hostage situation opens up future hostage situations. Let's not forget that Yahya Sinwa, the mm. director of this operations on October the 7th, the leader of Hamas inside Gaza, was himself passed part of a prisoner swap mm. uh, with Gilad Shalit. Thousands yes. of prisoners uh, were set free uh, in exchange for that one living Israeli mm. soldier. And this goes back to October the 6th, if you like, that the Netanyahu government, mm. um, and because of the judicial reform strife that was going on before the pogrom is not exactly in control of the people. There's a control and command mm. centre <clears throat> amongst the hostage families, yeah. which is kind of leading the agenda yeah. and taking things away 
from the strategy of war. Mm. And this is problematic, isn't it, for the leadership? It's tricky. There's two politicians. They're not household names in the UK. Itamar Ben-Gvir and uh, Belazel Smotrich. And they are what we would call the far-right. When people say it is a far-right Israeli government, it isn't. It has far-right elements that Benjamin Netanyahu has had to rely on in order to prop himself up. And now we can get into the details of uh, why it is that people blame them in part for uh, the October 7th attacks. So that'll take uh, a different uh, direction. But as you said, uh, there's, there is a, a sort of a mobilisation of feeling that they need to get the hostages back. But there is a pushback against that within the Israeli government. That's being led by these two gentlemen in particular or uh, their allies. The reason why is because they anticipate that they do not have very long in government left because they are being blamed, along with Netanyahu, this government is being blamed for the catastrophic security failure. This is why Yair Lapid, the centre-left leader, has said that while he will support the Israeli government uh, in its campaign in Gaza, he's not going to join a coalition because he understands that he will then be, could be, tainted by association. The left is waiting in Israel in anticipation for the fall of this government. Um, that, again, be very clear, the left is not like the Labour Party in the UK. It's a very different kind of... It's not going to fall at the moment, soft. is it, Benedict? Because, of course, there's not now a, a sort of ruling war coalition. Even yeah. Benny Gantz, who yes. is possibly the most likely left of centre mm. prime ministerial candidate, I mean, he's not going it's during not, time of war to yeah. try and upheave, is it's he? It's not going to fall just yet, no. but it is on and borrowed time. Mm. And it is only going to last for as long as this war goes on. And let's also be clear, if the war doesn't go very well, it might not last that long. So mm. the reason why you will but see... But it is going well, isn't it? it? Well, that's another point that we should get to. But the reason why you are seeing, I think, a lot of belligerence within the Israeli regime is they, uh, these two gentlemen in particular, who are... Let's be clear, they are sort of supremacists when it comes to the idea of Israel. They do believe in settlements. They do believe in the idea of a greater Israel taking back Samaria, Judea, all of these places. They recognise they have a very limited window in which they can actually do the things that they want to do before they are out on their rear. That is why their attitude is, no, let's level Gaza. Let's effectively have a form of ethnic cleansing. That's more important than getting the hostages out because they are sitting there thinking, this is what our supporters want. Um, the war, though, is going very well. And this was the great sort of fear at the start and I think this had been built in because of the Ukraine war I think people had heard of Hamas tunnels and thought oh no it's going to be like uh, it's going to it's going to be like Mariupol it's going to be like the Azov style it's going to be a disaster they're going to be bedded in thousands of people are going to die thousands of IDF troops are going to die just clearing out individual tunnels that hasn't happened yet it's gone you know, the opposite direction mm. so actually for now yes that is I think going very much in Netanyahu's favor but you have to remember the IDF it kind of has two foreign policy objectives. One is Iran and one is Hamas. It has been focusing on what it would do if it had to go into Gaza for decades now. It has mapped out, it has infiltrated parts of Hamas very effectively. It knows roughly where all of the, the bases are. The US does as well, which is why, whilst the rest of the world is saying, Al-Shifa is a hospital, you can't be bombing it, the Pentagon's kind of sat there going, no, that is a base, that, yeah. is, a, that, that is where they have a, a military installation. Um, it is going quite well. Obviously, people say that Hamas has won the PR war because people are calling for a ceasefire, but a PR war is only as good as for as long as you can survive. And right now, Hamas is taking huge losses from what we can gather.